Hello, hello, hello folks, it's me, Kerbnot here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Actually Play Kerbal Space Program. I'm wearing odd socks, let's begin. Okay, so we the last episode what we did was we were bringing back the fuel depot uh, from the moon to Kerbin so that we can both refuel the fuel depot and bring back a whole bunch of science that we gathered from landing on the moon in various spots and, you know, just gathering lots of, you know, various scientific data from uh, mystery goo containers and, uh, you know, materials bay observations. And so all of that science was uh, stuck into the fuel depot as it was returning. And so you saw there what we were doing. We were aero-breaking around carbon to put it into a, a relatively, uh, circular orbit around Kerbin so that, well, first of all, we can send up this spacecraft right here. This spacecraft is a just a, just a normal crew module. Um, it is a three-man crew module, though I have um, asked only one Kerbal to fly it up into space, as we do not need three. Plus, we want to uh, give the, the two lovely little Kerbinauts on this fuel depot uh, a little bit of a break so we're gonna give them a, a little bit of holiday back on Kerbin before they're launched back up again into space and so this is also gonna be kind of a little uh, kind of bus home if you will it's their taxi it's their ride home um, and so it's serving a, a bunch of purposes first of all we're gonna transfer some uh, fuel around the place um, and then we're going to get out and we're going to take this science out of the capsule here and just dump it into the um, into the kind of module uh, modular capsule thing of Bobby right there before hopping onto the pusher and um, getting in and you know just relaxing because he's he's probably never been in space before um, from what I know unless he's been sneaking around in space while I've not been playing. Who knows, perhaps that's what Kerbals do, you never know. Anyway, uh, we get uh, our pilots out, we get the other pilots out. I would tell you their names, but uh, I have forgotten their names and uh, the screen I'm looking at is too small to actually read their names, which is a shame. However, we get both of them out um, and we undock from the the fuel depot can and we've got all of the science on board so what we're going to do is we're going to use the power of this very small engine to um <laughs> get us back onto carbon now we, of course we don't have a lot of fuel on this engine and so we have to be uh kind of very conservative with our fuel and so just making sure that when we do burn we are burning uh retrograde um, so we slow our orbit down and we come back to Kerbin. We detach our um, bunch of whatever that was, you know, we've got our fuel, all our RCS, you know, batteries, solar power, all of that was in that little thing we just detached. And we can come back down to Kerbin. This is, uh, of course, significantly sped up uh, so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. I could have cut, uh, but you know, it's, it's sometimes just quite nice to watch the whole thing. Um, even if it's just quite fast. And of course we come down, uh, flying down amongst the clouds and uh, coming down for that final touchdown. And there we go. We do however just double check to make sure we don't have science in the water and then recover the vehicle. Now, now we've got all that science, let's get some stuff. First thing to get is some uh, more science equipment which is going to be very necessary for gaining more science. Second thing is even more science equipment because uh, I'm a real science buff um, and I think it's just a real, you know, it's, it's what we need to do. We need to get that science equipment so uh, our probes can do more uh, work when they go out uh, into all the other planets and out across the solar system. We're able to um, kind of just get more science um, because because the probes we can't get um, kind of uh, you know stuff that Kerbals could get for for instance EVA reports or crew reports or uh, surface samples depending on whether the probes are designed to land or not so I mean there's a whole bunch of things that you don't get when you send probes and you know that's what I'm trying to make up for we've got all the science equipment so whenever we do send probes out we're getting more bang for a buck 
Um, also, sending probes um, is kind of generally a bit easier um, than sending Kerbals, just because we don't have to worry about the, um, you know, about... I was going to say food and all that, but that's more in real life, and in Kerbal Space Program, unless you install mods, you don't need to worry about food and stuff. Really, in Kerbal Space Program, the only benefit of uh, probes is the weight, um, and by weight I mean um, mass, not weight, because weight's to do with your gravitational uh, force and all that, so mass is what I meant. Anyway, you can see what I've been doing while I've been talking is I've been launching up fuel into uh, orbit around Kerbin uh, to rendezvous with the fuel depot so that we can refuel it. That first one um, was a manned one and because I completely forgot parachutes I had to keep the guys on board the station which was good actually because um, they only had uh, one guy on there, so you know it was kind of uh, kind of good that we managed to get a few guys up into space. This one, however, is uh, probe powered, has no guys on board, and so it just docked um, using some of the fuel on board, of course, to get it into orbit, and uh, then using the RCS on board just to get it out of orbit. Um, I'm amazed it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere, so um, that's a bonus. I tried to use maybe a lifting body effect, hoping that it might work, but um, alas, it didn't. I didn't have the torque to do anything with it, and so we just watch it, you know, fly into Kerbin and uh, kind of watch a whole bunch of different parts, uh, you know, crash into the ground and just enjoy the explosions because I think that explosions are the cinema for Kerbals. Um, so yeah, that's that's always fun to watch. Anyway, this next launch is what I've just been talking about. It's a probe, and this probe is going to be going uh, quite far. Last time what we did was we um, launched a probe to Juna, because there was a, a Juna window coming up. Now we've got uh, another window coming up. The next window is a window to uh, Elu, if I remember correctly. Now, uh, Elu, of course, is very far. It's the furthest planet from Kerbal, the sun. And um, uh, because of that, it takes a, a very large amount of Delta V to get to. Um, and also, what happens while I'm trying to get to Elu is I end up accidentally getting an encounter with uh, Jewel as well, which is a bit weird. But anyway, we do refine um, our uh, encounter, and we we kind of get that all set up. Now we are doing a plane change. Um, so that we are in the same plane as Elu, so that we can come in a bit closer and just generally be more accurate. Um, really, this would have been more efficient uh, were I uh, further out from the sun, so if I had waited and had done my plane change up um, near the periapsis uh, node, it would have been a lot more efficient. However, I am impatient and like to, you know, cram as much stuff in as possible. So I did waste fuel here, but, you know, we're, we have a nuclear engine uh, and we have tons of fuel, so, you know, we're, we're gonna go and we're gonna just, um, you know, get get as much done as possible in this app. So we do, we do do the plane change, which is lovely and fun, um, and then we send it on its way and put down a alarm in Kerbal Alarm Clock, um, just to remind us to do a a little bit of a, a correction burn when we get closer to Elu, which will be in a significant amount of time. Um, so don't expect that coming back anytime soon. However, in the meantime, while that's flying through space, we do uh, start to send back this um, fuel depot to the moon. And doing this takes a very, very long time. This fuel depot, of course, is very heavy and it's running on one nuclear engine, which means that it takes several orbits, and so I have to start my burn earlier um, just to make up for that. Of course, we do, um, after a long time, get it into orbit around the moon. Um, I decide that I'm not going to put it into circular orbit right away because I do want to do a plane change, and as I was saying before, plane changing is most efficient when you're furthest away from the planet. Well, actually it's most efficient when you're traveling uh, very slowly. However, um, because of the way orbit orbital mechanics work, you are traveling the slowest when you are furthest away from the planet. And so I decided to kind of get myself into a very um, eccentric orbit and do a plane change at the 
the highest node as opposed to uh, getting myself to a circular sorry a circular orbit and um, you know uh, doing the plane change then and wasting a bit more fuel of course we do uh, do that plane change and get into a lovely little orbit rendezvousing with the cilia station coming in um, with our uh, large little large little a uh, large bit of fuel um, so we're going to hook that on to the Celia station and uh, continue with our landings and exploration of the moon. Now, this is a docking procedure. I like docking. It's a, it's a very fun thing to do. Um, a lot of people seem to have a very big problem with docking and um, in some situations I don't see why. Um, I mean, I can understand how hard it is to begin with, but you know, it's it is one of these things you with with practice you can get it right on I find that using the map view uh, really really helps um, when you're getting in quite close because it does give you a close encounter and if you can just uh, fine-tune that close encounter so you get it down to uh, a zero zero then you're gonna get in right really really close and it's just a matter of uh, using your nav ball to navigate even closer to your target Anyway, we get docked after all of that um, docking procedure and we start burning uh, with our pusher again because this time what we're doing is we're taking the lander to um, somewhere we have not been before um, or perhaps somewhere that we have, um, you know, not visited in its entirety. We've not visited the poles before. Um, we have visited a polar crater before, but that wasn't exactly the poles, that was just more of a crater near the poles, so, you know, let's go to the poles. I do happen to burn the wrong way, and so it's, you know, that kind of awkward moment where the driver of the spaceship's like, oh, wait, no, turns the map upside down, you know, <laughs> I was looking at it the wrong way. Anyway, <laughs> um, I can imagine Jebediah doing that quite often. Um, he is a pro, but I can assume that uh, he is not always perfect and so um, yes our pilot does make the error of burning in the wrong direction which is um, very quickly solved just by burning in the opposite direction for um, an equal amount of time and you know even longer just to continue on with our burn as it would have happened before we <laughs> went the wrong way okay so here we go we're um, gonna be uh, landing here um, before we do visit the poles, what we're going to do is we're going to visit this crater here. This this crater is um, just one of the ones a bit kind of south southerly south yeah south southerly <laughs> of the equator of the moon, um, and so we we begin to come down. I do this landing in um, IVA mode uh, just because it was quite dark, and you know I just wanted to give it a try. I haven't landed IVA for a while, so um, I give it a shot, and you know. Um, using the um, the radio, the kind of altimeter, uh, we're able to actually see our distance from the land, which is one thing that you get in IVA mode that you do not get um, in kind of exterior mode, which I find very annoying. I think we should probably have that somewhere in exterior mode here where we can view our spaceship. I think a, 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 an altimeter like that would be a very uh, handy thing to have. However, um, landing in IVA is, is made a lot easier by that little um, altimeter and you know we can use it to land safely really because you know landing safely is a little bit better than crashing and uh, killing everyone only a little bit not like massively um, you get you do get a lot of fireworks when you uh, crash and die but uh, when you don't you get to land and uh, plant flags and do science and uh, Enjoy the darkness of of the moon because yeah, the darkness is just extreme. I've had to I've had to boost up this and a few other um, shots in post just so that we can see it. And it, it looks a bit nasty. Yeah, I don't like the lighting things up, um, but you know sometimes it's necessary, um, which is a shame. But anyway. We continue on our journey, we've planted our flag, we've got the science, we're going to return to the capsule so that we can ascend into orbit and rendezvous with our uh, pusher once again. And so we, uh, we look into orbit, first of all, <laughs> because we don't want to launch like way before our, thing, our, um, our 
pusher gets there, um, we don't have to waste time in orbit. And so we just uh, warp around to when it's back overhead, and we launch into the sky, ascending um, into the black abyss of space um, to rendezvous with our pusher, which is right here. Uh, we do do the docking on with our with our pusher. Um, I'm not sure why exactly. Um, I may have run out of uh, EVA fuel. I'm not sure. I'm going to say that I did just because I can't remember, and I, that's the only reason I can think of why I did the um, the docking with my pusher as opposed to with the lander. Um, we do, however, dock in the end, and it's lovely and fun. Um, <laughs> Uh, we do bump it a bit, and it starts to rock over to the side. And now, we have to do all the EVA nonsense. Um, by EVA nonsense, I mean grabbing the the materials from the experiments and popping them into the, you know, the the container where we're going to hold all the science, and you know, all of that stuff that just takes a lot of time and doesn't look very nice but you know if I don't show it then it's just kind of weird and you've got continuity errors and you know science is uh, somewhere where you don't know where it is and then I don't know where it is because I haven't been kept keeping a record of it. Generally speaking it's just handy to show this stuff. Um, it's a bit boring but you know let's get through it and continue with our exploration of the moon. Okay, so as I was saying a long time ago, or it seems like a long time ago, is that we're going to the moon. Not going to the moon, going to the poles. Well, it's on the moon as well, but you know, poles on the moon. We're going to the moon or poles, haha. And uh, here we are, we are coming in over the poles. And one thing about the poles that is um, really, really hard to land on as opposed to everywhere else, is that they are very, very jaggedy and mountainy. Um, don't ask me why. I don't know, maybe um, this was on purpose, maybe it's just because um, this, the poles are supposed to be really, really weird. I don't know. However, that's something we have to deal with when landing. And so, when landing on the poles, we have to find the perfect landing spot. And thankfully, I came across it um, almost by sheer luck. Um, and my breaking burn took me down uh, to land on it quite successfully. And so we are able to just um, land and not fall over because um, the walls of these mountains here are very, very steep. If we had landed on them, we would almost certainly fall over um, and never be able to return to orbit, which would be bad because we'd have to send up another lander. And so, you know, finding the right spot to land is definitely a major concern when uh, proceeding to go to the poles. Anyway, we've done our science um, on the uh, on the actual ship itself, and we do some EVA science. So just getting the um, the the surface samples and the EVA reports from the moon. We don't, however, plant a flag, and this is because we're going to go elsewhere to plant our flag. We are at the poles. We have lots of fuel. I think that this means that we are going to go to the North Pole precisely and attempt to plant our flag here. And so we go to the North Pole. Let the game begin.
and there we go. We finally managed to get back into the ship. My goodness, that was insane. And also, so much fun. Um, the North Pole is just a bucket of laughs. Uh, I would suggest it as a holiday destination for all Kerbals and everyone that's uh, playing Kerbal Space Program. If you haven't been to the Poles of the Moon, uh, definitely go check them out. They are, you know, hilarious and uh, always a good laugh. So, uh, here we go. We did our plane change and we're coming back into uh, orbit and rendezvousing with the Celia station. Now, we don't have any docking ports, free, um, at this moment in time. Well, we do, down at the depot, but not for what we're going to do uh, in the future. And so what we do is we uh, shove off the uh, pusher and we spin our lander around to uh, bring us in for kind of docking, making sure we're in the right orientation for docking. And so we continue to head towards this docking port. Um, one kind of good way to dock if you um, are still kind of suffering from um, the inability to dock is um, getting your prograde marker um, further away from your direct your kind of pointing marker or the way you're facing uh, than your uh, target marker is and then that will bring your target marker in closer to you and then you just kill off your velocity and uh, point towards it again and you know just follow that up anyway that is us we have docked we've got the pressure on we have you know successfully done this and you can see from the uh, notes that i'm placing down what my plan is we are leaving the moon we are indeed uh, going to leave the moon in search for ever more um, science, ever more science, even more science uh, from Minimus because we have explored the moon um, significantly. Uh, we have kind of scoured its surface for lots of different uh, kind of landmarks and uh, lots of different little things that are happening, and so we have decided to leave and uh, break new ground and uh, figure out what we can do um, to get more science and what we can do is we can go to Minimus because Minimus is delicious and uh, ice creamy and uh, you know I'm, I just hope they don't take their helmets off and uh, you know just take a mouthful of its strange blue surface anyway what we can do while we are leaving the moon just to get some kind of last minute science before we exit the sphere of influence is um well get some uh, you know, materials-based studies and EVA, not EVA, sorry, the Mystery Goo uh, science, because we didn't get um, material studies from a high orbit around the moon uh, when we came in. Uh, I think we got lots of low orbit science, but not high orbit science, which is a shame. Um, and so what we have to do first is we just have to take the science out from um, the pole landings and put them into the um, into the hitchhiker container, um, making sure we take out the science, of course, from the uh, the landing pod as well, just so we can stick all of that into the uh, container, into the hitchhiker storage container, making sure we um, put it in there with the rest of our hitchhikers, and uh, then we can do the actual science. So we, you see, we can grab another maybe you know 20, if not more, science um, from high orbit, you know, just by leaving the moon you know we were going to get the science anyway but it's a good thing to remember it when we are uh, leaving and so uh, you can see we do that we use the science space and all that to grab the lovely uh, adorable science that comes with the uh, flying high above the moon i don't quite see what the difference is in science between high above the moon and low above the moon um i know the gravitational uh, you know the gravity sorry will be stronger when you're closer to the moon um, however, apart from that, nothing really would change, I don't think. Um, so, I don't know how that works. However, we do take advantage of it, which is the main thing. Next up, we have to do a plane change just to get into the right plane with the with Minimus, so that, we, th so that this encounter does happen, because right now it's just kind of a close encounter, um, and with this plane change, we turn it into an actual encounter, um, and we can just place down a node and um, 
set an alarm for that node and just name it as a correctional burn. So yes, that is me. That is all for me today. Um, next episode, what we will be doing is we will be actually arriving at Minimus and we will be sending up some probes, some more probes into uh, the cosmos just to explore and, you know, uh, find some lovely little places to go visiting with our Kerbals. But until then, I will see you next time. Have a great day, folks.